Hi, my name is Rick. I'm from Ukraine. The video you're about to see is an interview with a Russian soldier in Ukrainian captivity made by Ukrainian journalist Volodymyr Zolkin. I wish to make this kind of content available to more people around the world. This is why I decided to dub it into English. It's not much, but it's honest work. All rights belong to Zolkin and his team. Please enjoy. I've brought packs. So, how was your war? I shouldn't have gone to war. Why so? I'm all dirty now. Why shouldn't you have gone? I was a fool to go to war. A fool? Yes. Move this way a bit. Like this? Yes, more or less. So we smoke and begin. Do you have a number to call? Will you call? Yes, yes. And why shouldn't you have gone to war? You went for the money, right? Plus seven. What is your second name? Lubushkin. Who is this? Ah, my wife will answer. No, I mean you, Lubushkin. Are you a Mobic? Yes. It's if she will answer. And why wouldn't she? She has a lot of those megaphone numbers. Why? I don't know. A lot of numbers? Well, not many, but there's one more number on which she will definitely answer. This one is not the one. There's no WhatsApp on this one. No WhatsApp? Nope. Then she must have deleted it already. Plus seven. Ah, here it is. Yes, this is her. It's my family. One, two, three, four kids. Three of her kids and the little daughter is mine. But I consider them all mine. Understandable. Were you in the garage? Where? Put the cigarette away, I'm taking a photo for her. Were you taken to captivity in the garage or in the house? In the house, in the basement. I didn't expect it at all that everyone would be so kind to me here. So kind? Yes. And what did you expect? They tell us that it's a mess in here. Should we kill you instead? We paid for you. You shouldn't be killed. How much? You've cost us $300. How much is that? It is 18,000 rubles or 20,000. Is that a lot? It's fine. It's fine. It is fine? Well, a lot. You cost less? May I finish yours? But you... And where's the cigarette? They're gone. Gone where? You smoked them already? Later then. We've got to begin. Thank you. Should I begin? Yes. I, Lubushkin Vladimir Alexeyevich. Date of birth, April 12th, year 1993. I was born in Russia, Sahar Republic, Yakutia, town of Aldan. Address of residence, don't say the address, people don't need it. I was taken captive. What are you doing? I don't know what to say. Say what they asked you to tell me. And what did they ask you to say? That my mother... But it's just something they told me. Okay, let's do... We have this for the first time. One person just starts telling something to the phone's camera. 
на телефон камеру. I just didn't know. It's a conversation. You've already introduced yourself. Are you a conscript? Yes. Do you give your voluntary consent for recording and publishing? Yes. Why? Well, so everyone can see. Why does everyone need this? I don't know. So no one will commit such acts as I did. What act did you commit? Went here to war. Went to war. I've been told that you have a very interesting story. Well, we haven't heard something like this yet. The fact that I was in an orphanage? They didn't say anything about an orphanage. That I was... I kind of wanted to come to this myself, but... When were you conscripted? I was conscripted on October 24th. October. From what town? Town of Aldan. Aldan. What republic is this? Republic of Saha, Yakutia. Yakutia. It is far, right? Well, about 4,000 kilometers from Vladivostok. And how far from Moscow? From Moscow. I don't know. A week on a train. A week on a train? And you were flying on a plane? We were flying on a plane. A week on a train. Were you conscripted through the draft board? Yes. Did you receive the summons? Yes. So you went there with the summons and everything happened after? Well, not actually went. They made me go. How did they make you? They came to me and took me. Come to your home? Yes. What time was it? I don't remember exactly. I was drunk. Drunk? Yes. It was probably in the evening. No, somewhere around. It was in the afternoon, around 3 or 4 p.m. Around 3 or 4 p.m. you were drunk and they came to your home and took you? Yes. Who came to you? The military? No, police. And they took you drunk to the draft board? To give me the summons, yes. And what happened next? And then, of course, I had to go there. Because the summons was already handed over to me. And why did they come to your home? Because they had to gather all the conscripts of the A1 category. And it turned out that my category is A3. What does it mean, A1, A3? Validity. Is this valid? Yes. Were you celebrating something at 3 p.m.? Was it the weekend? It was a weekend. I came back from work. Where do you work? I worked as a slinger. I am trans service. Slinger. I'll be honest, I don't know who that is. Slinger is the one who ties something heavy to the crane with slings to move it around. Ah, so you're hanging these hooks on the fright. Yes, yes, yes. So you worked as a slinger. What was your salary? Around 70-75k. Well, it's a good salary. Or is it not much? It's pretty fine for our town. So you worked there in the night or not? No, I worked shifts there. I'd come back home from my shift. Ah, you work shifts. And you just got back home from your shift and... And so... You decided to drink, you were drinking, and why did they come? They just came and rang the doorbell? Yes. Were you very drunk? Well, not that much. Medium drunk. Medium? How much did you drink? <laughs> Around a six pack of beer and a bit of cognac. Around three liters? No, I don't drink that much with my wife. So you sat with your wife and finished it? My wife doesn't drink much. And where were your shifts and how long were they? My shifts are in Bolshoi Nimnir. There are warehouses in there and trucking happens from there.
How much time does your shift take? I work for three months and then I rest for one month. Sometimes for a month and a half. So, did you come back home from your shift on the Friday? But how did they know that you'd come back? I don't know. They were going around the houses. Well, it sounds like they were waiting on you to come to hand the summons over to you. Maybe, I don't know. So, they came to your home and you're sitting in the kitchen, in your underwear, sipping the beer. No, not in the underwear. Okay, not in your underwear. What did they say? That's it, let's go. Yes, they brought you to the draft board, gave you the summons. What's next? After that, I was given time to gather my things. Ah, so you went home, gathered your things, and on Sunday you took off? Yes, and then we were sent to Yakutsk on the buses. To Yakutsk on the buses. What education do you have? Special secondary education. Second class car mechanic. What is a second class car? Ah, it's the mechanic class. Yes, it's the lowest class. Yes, they told me that you experienced some stuff in your childhood. Yes, my mother wanted to kill me when I was a kid. What happened? Well, how many kids were in your family? Only me. Only you. As mother told me that first a sister was born, she didn't make it through pneumonia, died. Then a brother was born, also didn't make it through pneumonia, died. Then I was born, I had a rough pneumonia. I barely recovered from it. How old were you? What was your age? Then, when I had pneumonia, I don't remember, you were little, right? Yes, I remember that before I was six years old, my mother was looking after me, everything was kind of fine. And when I was six years old, she started to drink, beating up her mother, then beating up me, jumping on me, to kill me. She tried to feed me to the dog. Well, back then there was a stepfather already. I never knew my father. As I was told, he was killed. It's also not clear if my mother killed him or someone else. <coughs> and then... And what about the stepfather? He watched it all and did nothing? No, stepfather did the opposite. When she tried to feed me to the dog, he took the dog away from me, actually saved me. Did the dog start to eat you? It bite me. I have the scar over here, near my appendix. No need to show it. And why did the dog bite you? Was it your dog? It wasn't my dog. My mother just met the stepfather. It was his dog. She was just drinking a lot. My mother was an alcoholic. Did she throw you into the dog's cage? No, the dog was on the chain and she dragged me to it. And I was afraid of dogs, so it bite me. But she kept dragging me. My stepfather saw it and hit both her and the dog. Then, later that day, in the evening, when we were leaving the stepfather's house, she just tossed me and started jumping on me. I started to suffocate, and after that she had something like a thought that maybe she doesn't need to kill me. So she left me alive as a result. Then, during her next binge, she chased me with an axe. And all these drinking sprees of hers, one time she almost burned me. How? She was chasing you with an axe and you ran away from her? Yes, I was running from her. How old were you? Six years old. I was running away from her, hiding.
and she couldn't find you. She wasn't able to find me and I was coming back to her myself when I saw that she got more or less sober. Did she even remember what was happening? She says that she didn't. I mean, she was sane when she got out of prison. But this is not all. Later, when I was at my stepfather's house, she decided to kill me again. She killed the stepfather and presumably killed his friend. And I hid in the doghouse of the same dog that she tried to feed me to. Wasn't the dog biting? The dog? Not me, no. You were friends with it already. Yes, I was walking the dog already. How did she kill the stepfather and his friend? She put an axe into stepfather's head, if I'm not mistaken. And his friend with a knife. Were they drinking all together? Yes. You saw what's happening there and ran away? Ran away into the doghouse and hid there. She wanted to kill you too? Yes, she was trying to get me and the dog didn't let her to get close to me. You were sitting in the doghouse, the dog was barking at her and she was standing and the stepfather's mother already called the police and an ambulance. Was it a private house? Yes, it was a private house. In some village? Town of Aldan, township of Nizhny Kuranach. So in fact, the dog saved your life. Yes, and police jumped in right on time. My mother started running, but they restrained her. That's it, they put me in an orphanage, a trial happened. Then they asked me if I want my mother's parental rights to be terminated. I told them that I wanted them to be terminated. And I stayed to live in the orphanage. Do you have some other relatives? Yes, but they are drunks. I don't communicate with them. I'm trying to forget them. What happened after the orphanage? After the orphanage? Well, how? I went to study. I studied. Partied hard time to time, got drunk, almost didn't learn anything of life. How did you meet your wife? With my wife? She came to us to Aldan. And I was drinking and partying back then. So my friend, well, not actually a friend, just an acquaintance, met her. And we decided to meet and drink together. He can only communicate over his phone, but I can also do it in person. Are you an extrovert? Yes. And she... It seems I hooked her with it. Because I communicate verbally and he's doing it through the phone. So she blew him off, we kept the connection, then I came to visit her. Her apartment was so-so and also she had kids. So I took them to my place. You owed an apartment? Hmm? You owed an apartment? Yes, I was provided with an apartment through the orphanage. And I was also working. So I moved them into my place. We also had to change the school for kids. Did you get married? Not immediately. When was it? When did you meet? It was... Hard to remember. I'm not good with dates. Just give or take. Around six years ago. And when did you get married? We got married around five years ago. Then your daughter was born. Then my daughter was born. How old is your daughter? My daughter. 7th of 11th month, year 2021. So she's almost two years old. One and a half. Wait, you officially have four kids, right? Yes, officially. Why did they conscript you then? Three of them aren't mine legally. 
But you don't need to legalize them. Well, I... Oh, I don't really know. I'm not their legal guardian. Mm -hmm. But you're officially married. Yes, yes. Then you should automatically be considered as their father and the person who provides for them. And our government thinks differently. Logic isn't... I mean, if their natural father is alive and he's paying alimony, then he is considered their father. But they are divorced if she married you. Divorced. But he keeps paying the alimony. Yes. I don't know then. I don't know. I asked myself this question too. Did you tell them this in the draft board? Yes. And what did they tell you? Nothing. Like, they don't care? They don't. You go to war, and that's it. You go to war, and that's it. It was on October 24th, right? Yes. Cool. What did your wife say when you received the summons and returned home to gather your things? She got upset. Everyone got upset. Everyone got upset. What did you know about what's happening? Where? Here? Yes. Nothing really. Well... That they kind of say that your army is... Well... Shooting, shelling the civilians, <clears throat> kind of killing children and stuff like that. And in captivity they will torture us and stuff like that. But it turned out that everything is quite the opposite. That they treat Russians in captivity well. How do they treat you? First, they've provided me with a first aid and keep treating me to this day. You were injured during the... I know that you have a fracture. During the tank shelling of the house that you were in, right? Yes. There's a rough fracture. The bones have parted this far, right? Sort of. They've told me so. There's also a fragment left inside. The fragment of the bone or... No, the fragment of something that crashed into the bone. How were you equipped? How long were you prepared for? Have you been in the army before? In the army? Before this? Yes. What was your role? It was in 2011. I served in the Air Force. Long range aviation. Tixi. Tixi, yes. Mouth of the Lena River. Lena. Laptev Sea. Yes. Air Force. Air Force of the Long Range Aviation. What were you doing there? Shoveled the snow? Was it all the service? What else it is to do there? It's mostly blizzard. Either you shovel the snow or you're the loader. Such is the army, right? <laughs> yeah. And then they tell us to remember the basics. What we were taught. What you were taught? <laughs> yeah. And what were you taught? <laughs> to show all the snow and how to be a loader. Nice. How long you've been training here for? Here on Pamburova for about two weeks. What were you doing? We were training. What was the training about? How to shoot and... How to... Damn. Ah, run. They were teaching you how to run? Yes, in full gear. Did they teach you? No, my cardio couldn't take it. What body armor did you have? The same that was taken off me. I don't... I don't know which one was taken off you. You're not in your uniform right now. I don't know much about it. Was it good? Fancy? 
Who the hell knows, right? Armor is armor. What kind of helmet? <laughs> Same. A helmet is a helmet. How many magazines did you have? Magazines? Yes. I had I had zero magazines. I had the machine gun. Ah, machine gunner. Yes. So you were carrying it on your shoulder like Terminator. <laughs> no. No? No. Like commandos? No, I was just throwing it over the shoulder using the rope and dragging it. The rope? It is called the belt. Yes, the belt. And you probably couldn't run with the body armor. No. How far could you run? Not far. Maybe 30 kilometers. No way. 20. Nah, I won't even run one kilometer. I'll be out of breath. But you're a marine. I'm not a marine. Airborne? I'm from Air Force. Air Force. Should every Air Force member run around with machine gun? No. Well, yeah. So they taught you to fight, to run. Where did you go next? We went to Volnovakha. To Volnovakha. What was happening there? Waiting, training, waiting, training. Next. Well, storm? What were you storming? Верхние дачи, Угледар. В Угледар's direction. Judging by the fact that you're in captivity, training and waiting didn't help you a lot. Well, we arrived to an abandoned house and stayed there the whole time. Was it at least cozy there? A lot of food? There was nothing there. What, there was no food? Well, we had a small number of food and water with us. And most of our backpacks were lying around the road. We were afraid to go out to the road. So you were driving and they've started firing at you, right? Yes. So you all jumped off the armored vehicle and ran into the house? Yes. You hadn't reached the destination point. Yes. I just remembered a piece of the previous dialogue and figured out. You were sitting in the house, you got surrounded. You had no food. How many days had you spent there? Around 10 days, I guess, you spent in this house. Yes, because when the tank destroyed the whole house, most of us were... How many of you were there? 300 jumped down to the basement. Ah, those who were left up in the building became 200. And there were around 7 people in the basement. Around 10 people. 10. Nice tank, isn't it? Tank man, well done. Powerful. Powerful. Who was your officer? We had no officers. How? Are you some vagabonds? No, we had a platoon commander. Who? Zinc. Zinc? Yes. Did he have ammunition zincs? No, I mean... 200? Call sign zinc. Call sign zinc? And why zinc? I don't know, he probably made it up. What your call sign was? Mine was the bear. All right. I hope you won't hit me. Well, I have a bonus at the moment. <coughs> Why are you fighting? We are fools. This is why we're fighting. How many died? So many. How is your troop command? Our troops command? I don't know. You didn't see it? No. Or you didn't get what I asked? You mean our superiors? Yes. How do they manage you? Skillfully or not? Is there support from artillery, aviation, spacemen? Judging by the fact that we were calling for artillery support when the tank was shelling us. Zero. Good. 
feedback. Then what is the answer to the question, how's the troop management? Not really good, not really good. <clears throat> Do you have something interesting else to tell us about your military career? Military? Yes. Nothing at all. All is not good. All is not good? Yes. Tell us something funny from your life. Because you're sitting here. I really feel some positivity from him because I understand this is not his thing at all. That he was just taken and thrown into this. Did you have refuseniks? Yes. And why aren't you one of them? Why didn't you refuse to fight? I want to live. And what did they do to refuseniks? They told us that they kind of shoot them down. Now tell me about it in more details. Those who... Those who are already located here in Ukraine and refuse to fight, they seem to shoot them down. Were there a lot of refuseniks? 20 people refused to fight when I was there. 20? Yes, 20 people. From how many? From a company. 20? From a hundred? Yes. And what did? Were they taken somewhere? I don't know. FSB was taking care of them. One person who guys knew didn't come back nor here, neither there. Refusnik? Yes. Cool. So he did refuse to fight. And when did he refuse? I can't tell you the exact date. I don't need the exact one. Roughly speaking, he refused in the end of November. Roughly speaking, yes, around that time. And what happened next? You lost contact with him and that's it? And that was it, yes. And what did you think? They probably killed him. I just kind of said that you have a nice army. Are they some kind of barrier squads? If you don't want to go die, then they're gonna finish you themselves? Mm -hmm. Is it possible to win with such motivation? It doesn't motivate at all. So, what about a life story, Comrade Bear? Life story? Yes, some fun story. I had a party life. I understand, this is why I ask you at least something for our... Because we had a conversation where I've told everything instead of you. They don't beat you up in captivity, medical treatment. I was mostly drinking and partying before I started to live with my wife. Drinking and partying. So, earned some money, went to drink and party. What town was it? Aldai? Aldan. Aldan. Is it a big town? It was a township before, now it's a town. Town, then it's big. How many thousands of people? I'm not good at it. I am the bear. I would have knocked. Woodpecker. Stupid. I tell you. What is the population of Russia? Population of Russia? Yes. Don't you know them all in person? So, how many? What do you think? Around 25 million, if not more. Say the biggest number that you can imagine. About 50 million. And what about the population of Ukraine? I don't know this either. Don't you even have a guess? I don't even have any guess. Also considering that a war is taking place. Are there a lot of people drinking in your town? No. Only such lost souls as I am, so to say. But why are you a lost soul? I don't know. I was drinking hard before I met my wife. And after she gave birth to our daughter, I tried not to drink that hard. 
So tell me some life story of a lost soul body bear. Some cool one with the police or a fight. Did it happen? No. I don't know how you... Your traditions. Nothing like that ever happened. Never? No. Kinda quiet? Yes. Sitting down in the kitchen? Sat down, got drunk and faded out. And went to sleep? Yeah. Every day? Well, not every day, but sometimes every day. What temperature is it there at the moment? Around 40 degrees? Minus 40? Yes. And in summer? In summer? Probably minus 20. Minus 20 in summer? Ah, damn. Summer is when it's warm. Sun is shining. No, it's warm. Warm. Plus 15. 30 sometimes. Rarely. Yes. You haven't been abroad, right? No, I haven't been abroad. What is the farthest place from home that you have visited? St. Petersburg. Wow, you probably went to Tretyakovka gallery. Tretyakovka. I don't know, it is probably not there. No, it was when I studied in technical college. Were you studying in Petersburg? No, I was studying in Aldan. And they sent us orphans on vacation to St. Petersburg. Mm -hmm. And what were you doing on vacation? There was a recreation center there. We went to the ice skating on evening walks. Understood. That's what it was. So, your wife isn't answering. We gotta call her. Is it possible to evade the draft there in Russia? How much does it cost? What costs? To dodge the draft? Yes. I don't know. Did she at least read the message? She did. This is why I'm calling her. Because she did. What will you tell her? That I love her very much. And that I want to come back. Record a voice message and tell her to pick up. My bunny, please pick up. It is me, Lyubushkin Vladimir Alexeyevich, your teddy bear. Please pick up Bunny. I guess she knows your full name. What does Putin want? I don't know. He didn't tell you. No. Shall we call him? No. Why? Let's at least call Medvedev. You're the bear, he's the bear. I think it's gonna be a so-so discussion. Why do you think so? I don't know. Shaigu then. Shaigu? Yes. But he kinda like resigned? No, he kinda like hasn't resigned yet. Why are you afraid to call any of them? It is fraught with consequences, as they say. And what do they say while she's answering? It's very interesting. Tell me what they say. Someone kind of called and told something. And then in the news they said that someone was evicted from their apartment and something else was done to them. Some deaths appeared and things for calling who? For example, VV Putin. VV? Yes. Nice country you have there. Why are you all afraid of everything there? They've probably intimidated us all. This is why everyone is afraid. It's a fact that they've intimidated you. Well, she listened to the voice message. Let's call her once more. See the blue check marks? Mm -hmm. 
It means that it is delivered and heard. <clears throat> Does your country need you? I don't know. Bonnie, hold on. Why are you screaming? Don't yell at me. Hello? Hello. How are you doing? Not too good. Your husband is in captivity. I know. You've probably watched the video. Yes. The one that said that he was paid for, right? Um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, there was some sum written there. I paid for him with the money that were donated by our citizens, subscribers. I have two questions for you. First question, do you want to talk to him? Of course I want to. Second question, do you give your consent for recording and publishing of this conversation? I don't care if the main thing for me is to see and to hear him. No, if you want to talk, then you have to agree. If you don't want to be published in these American internets, then you just say, no, I don't, and we'll finish the conversation. Say yes. I want to. Okay, then talk. My bunny, hi. Hi, how are you? Good. I love you very much. Hold on. Don't say where you are located. We love you very much too. We're waiting for you. Hold on. At least show me our daughter. She's asleep. Um, hang on. My sunshine is asleep. Bunny, I love you all very much. Vova, hold on. Everything is gonna be alright. I hope they will buy me out of here. Don't worry. Everything is gonna be alright. We'll do everything for this. We should be bought out, right? What do you mean by that? Or exchanged? Exchanged? What do you mean by bought out? Wait, I wanna... I want to do this, so I don't need to hold the phone. I hope I'll be exchanged. Vova, we're doing everything for this since yesterday. The process has been started. Do you see him? Yeah, I do. Okay, have a talk. Just don't say where you are. Bunny, they treat me well in here. May I ask you for a cig? This is good. Camera. Thank God, what's with your hand? An injury. Hold on, Vova. I'm holding on. How are you? Everything's gonna be fine. We're all right. I've started to come back to life bit by bit. Only shaking all the time, but in general it's all right. My hand is broken. Broken. It's okay, the hand will heal. The main thing is that you're alive. Did they put a plaster cast on your hand? They've put a splint on it. Told me that I'll need to treat it in Russia. Only bandaging while I'm here. Got it. I don't know how long it'll take, but... They can't do anything until you are officially recognized as the prisoner of war. Our side is waiting for the confirmation that you're in captivity. That's it. After that, you can be listed for exchange. Confirmation already happened, right? I don't know. I'm not the military. I've called your unit today. They've told me that there was still no confirmation. I'm gonna call your unit again tomorrow. Everything is gonna be all right. The main thing is that you're alive. I'm so happy to see you. I'm happy to see you too.
I was waiting. And how are the rest of the kids? Everything is alright. All town is uptight. Everyone is worried. Khabarovsk, Umupriya, Amurka, they're all so alarmed. Hold on. I'm holding on. Okay, Bunny, it's time. The main thing is that they treat you well and you're alive and healthy. They've provided you with medical treatment. Now it's only the matter of time and everything will be fine. If I have the possibility to call you again, I'll do it, okay? Anytime, Vov. Okay, bye, Bunny. I'm always in touch. Love you, kiss you. Okay, bye, love you, kiss you. Wait, wait. May I ask you a question? Yeah, ask. What are people saying there? Who needs this war? No one actually needs it. Then why are you fighting? Then why are you sending them to die? My husband was conscripted. He had to go. He didn't go there on his own will. He's not a volunteer. He's not a military. He's a civilian person. Why didn't he run away? But how? How can you run away from there? I don't know how. The question is not for me. For him? I was not there. I don't know how it is. Are there people who support the war? Of course we have such people here in Russia. They are in the country of slaves. Say goodbye. Goodbye, bunny. Love you. Kiss you. I love you, my bunny. Love you. Kiss you. Hold on. I'm with you. Remember this. Think about us and everything is gonna be alright. Bye, my bunny. Bye. Kiss you. Kiss you. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Happiness tears. Happiness tears. Yes, I saw my wife talk to her. Do you have something to add? Only that I'm a fool, that's all. That I went here. Are there a lot of those like you? A lot. Was there already someone from your town who came here and didn't come back? Here? Yes. Probably not. So there's still a lot of such meat. There will be. There will be? Probably, yes. Will you address your tribesmen? I will say only one thing to you. Don't come here. Don't fight. This is not your land. Your land is on your territory. Stay there. I'm done. Said it suddenly and bluntly. I'm done. Thank you. Here. May I? Yes, you may. Are you satisfied? Yes. So really, none of your acquaintances still haven't gone to captivity? No. No, not to captivity. Killed. Ah, killed? Yes. Yeah, they were killed. Were there the ones who were killed? Not now, with you this time, but... Those from your town who went to war and didn't come back. Those who went to war and didn't come back. Yes, there were those. And what? Send them off memorial and that's it? I don't know what they're doing. Maybe sending them off memorial and that's it. Why are you repeating after me? Did you have some acquaintances who died in the war? Well, not really acquaintances. I almost didn't know them.
Yes, they died, that's all. They were even kind of like buried here somewhere in Ukraine. Two of them in Ukraine for sure. They kind of like had relatives here, so they were buried here. Who's gonna win? The one whose land it is, and this land is yours. The one whose land it is, and this land is yours. The land is ours. Well, so I say that you're gonna win. Why? I'm sure of it. <laughs> Has your opinion about your army changed? Yes. In what way? In the most... Pardon my language, fucking way. You're allowed to swear in here. In the most fucking way. Why? I was buying it. Why? For so many years they were telling us that our army, money, the government was shaking money out of us. And where is that army now, if they're taking the damn conscripts and throwing them as cannon fodder? Well, that army exists somewhere, but they don't tell anyone where. Sitting somewhere, getting fat. Your police is working nicely. Why are you smoking that fast? No, they are smoldering fast. This is why I have to smoke fast. Our police is working efficiently, yes. Efficiently? Just against their own citizens. Beating them up and so on. Even when they're going to a rally. But you don't have rallies. We had rallies. When? Against Putin. When? I don't remember. But they were taking place. And what did they end with? Everyone got beaten the fuck up and that's it. Did you go to the rally? No, I was at work back then. But I was always voting against this Putin. And who were you voting for? I voted for Zhirinovsky, then I voted for... What was his name? Some politician. Ah, the one that was going against Putin, the one who was imprisoned. Navalny. Navalny. I voted for Navalny, supported him. Does anyone support Putin for real? For real? For real. Why would I? Grandmas, grandpas. What good did he do to them? I don't know. Pushed them into poverty? Pushed into poverty. Didn't provide you with gas. You sell gas to all the world. He didn't fix roads. He didn't do shit. They only fill and fill their pockets. He just placed his Edinorosi everywhere and that's it. Yes. He's a moral monster. That's all I'd like to say. Got it. Moral monster. Thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe and consider becoming the sponsor of my channel. You can also support my work on Patreon. All of this will help me bring you these dubs more often. Also don't forget to subscribe to Zolkin's channel. See you next time. Slava Ukraine!